there were days where every single day a bus was blowing up in Israel. There are days where every single day there's a rocket being uh, raining on our heads. Uh, there were days where every single day someone is being stabbed or run over by, by cars. This is an experience that every Israeli has gone through. I've lost four friends in one summer. I've lost another friend a few years ago. Um, I don't know one Israeli that doesn't know someone that was killed from this conflict. So when you have that reality of pain and suffering and danger, the first thing that you want is, is safety. And then you care about the other things for the most part, for the majority of the population. Do you have any insight as what we can do to not give extremists so much of a say in the matter and how we could give Israelis the feeling that they would be safe living together with Palestinians? Look, I, I think the way that you deal with extremists and radicals um, is that you do not react to them, right? If, uh, and I mentioned this to people before, like if, if we, if we react, uh, to, if we keep reacting to the radicals on the, on the other side, we end up becoming radicalized. The best way forward is for Jews and Arabs who don't want each other out to come together and outnumber the radicals on both sides. Like I said, if a Jew wants to win an argument, he's going to point to the Arab that wants him out. And if an Arab wants to win an argument, he's going to point to the Jew that wants him out. Right. So it's up to the people that don't want anybody out to come together and outnumber those people and not to, to react to them. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. What do you think that your population and collective needs to start seeing from Israelis in order to be open minded? that we can be ones that come together to create a solution. Like you need to be able to feel that we identify with your struggles, understand your struggles, want to end those suffering. Like what exactly do you need to start seeing from Israelis and not only the government, I mean the populations for Palestinians to be more open to this idea um, that we can live together. To be fr frankly speaking, this, this conversation right now, you know, there needs to be more of this. You know, not not just you know, just here, but like with 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 more people. That that's that's what needs to happen. The goal now is just to outnumber the radicals, for Jews and Arabs that want to coexist to come together and outnumber the radicals on both sides, in terms of freedom of movement, access to a port, access to an airport, a currency, all that sort of stuff, uh, representative government, um, and how we deliver that solution, can be something that you know um, can 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 happen naturally. We're not at that stage yet. We're, we're at the stage now where what needs to happen is the normalization in terms of communicating with each other, understanding each other's narratives and seeing each other as cousins. Um, uh, and then we can work um, and then and then we can work um, towards what that's going to look like. And I think there will always be individuals that are hateful. There will always be individuals that are racist, that are sexist, that are anti-Semitic, that are Islamophobic, that are anti-Arab, that are anti all sorts of populations, but they have to be kept in the shadows. They have to feel that if they air out their opinions, that they will be socially ostracized because I do believe in freedom of speech, but I also believe in the consequences of freedom of speech, which is social reaction to that speech. You know, someone no longer wanting to be associated or friends with an individual that has such horrible views. That's also freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And we need to create a reality where if someone says something against Palestinians or someone says something against Israelis, that they are ostracized by both of our communities. And I think the best way to do that is to start to humanize each other, understand our, our, our experiences, our identities, and focus on how do we move forward from here. There are many injustices that Palestinians experience today uh, for example, not having access to movement and not having access to resources, uh, not having access to great jobs and to education and to access to voting and access of representation for a military that controls them and, you know, not having access to, to many things that are basic needs. And even in Gaza, like there are certain times uh, throughout every day that there's no more electricity, that there's water cuts, you know, these are injustices. Uh, rights that people should have, freedoms that people should have, realities that people should live that do not exist. And to have justice is to create a new reality where those injustices end. Um, and there are injustices that Israelis experience, that we cannot go and live in many places within uh, Judea and Samaria, that we deal constantly with terrorism or wars, that all of us have experienced someone that was killed uh, because we're Jews, that this entire world constantly rejects us, de delegitimizes us, uh, demonizes us.
you know, and, and tries to claim that Israel doesn't have a right to exist. And every five feet that you go, you have to fight for your, your right and you have to, you know, fight just to, to have a right to breathe and to identify as who you are. Uh, there are injustices committed on both sides. Well, I mean, I'm just specifically re referring to the Balad Sham or the Levant region. So like your Maronites in in uh, in Lebanon, I mean, like Syria before, you know, things got messy there. Christians lived in relatively good good, good peace. And in and, 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 and what was, um, you know, the the British mandate of Palestine, um, you know, we, we, we lived in relatively good peace. I mean, as opposed to 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 Christianity, which in Europe literally wiped out every other minority and treated Jews like crap. Europe had a thriving pagan religion once upon a time, like it's gone, you know? So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's nowhere near the same as the experience in, in the Muslim world. And, and, and really this, this caricature of the, of, of, a, of the Jew being uh, bent on world domination and in control of finances uh, and, and starting wars, that was a distinctly European caricature. And it didn't show up in the Middle East until 1917, after the, after the ba Balfour Declaration, when the Muslim world flipped from being tolerant somewhat, you know, of, of, of minorities um, to being paranoid. And then all those atrocities happened. You know, the Jewish population does have fear. Many won't like to admit it. We, you know, we have a very difficult history of persecution, of multiple genocides. And our short, our short history after once returning to this land has been met with violence and more violence and more violence. When a nation has fear, the leader who can alleviate those fears through being a strong and powerful and charismatic will generally win the elections. So I personally see Bibi's continued re-election as a result of, of Israelis firmly believing that he is the one who will protect us against our, our threat from our neighbors. And if you look at the platform that Bibi generally runs on, it's one of security, security, security. So I would say that that is the, that is the reason. Uh, Rudy, maybe you have a different insight on this. Yeah, I, I agree. In order for a right-wing government, especially in the structure that exists today within Israel, to be elected on security, you have to have a level of insecurity. So in a way, the conflict sort of doesn't become the priority to solve because it doesn't allow you to stay in office. Although I wouldn't blame the consequences of you know ethnic conflicts and the status quo on the right-wing government. Uh, in my opinion, they have definitely not done enough to change that reality. And I think the reason for why people are voting more to the right is because this is more of a pressing issue. And something that I'd like to see change within Israel is to remove this divide of right wing and left wing. Other than um, something with two states, having a sort of one state solution without, you know, putting people in their own sort of separate legislatures. Like let's say if we were to be one country and, and we were to have all equal rights and citizenships and everything like that, then, you know, like it, it wouldn't be a distinct Jewish um, majority state. You know, would it turn into and 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 I don't I don't want to I don't want to take away you know a Jewish state you know I don't want to take that away I don't I, like I said I don't think that the answer to being replaced is to go and replace you know another people and to make it into something like New Zealand where you have a binational state where both people are represented in the coat of arms and there's even like a Maori verse in the national anthem I I don't think this would this would be an appropriate solution because it would defeat the purpose of having a Jewish state. You know, um, a Jewish state like can only exist with a manageable Arab minority. And that is one of the challenges that we, we have to face. So what does it, where does that leave us? I mean, the second option is back to two states. And then, like I said, we could have something like a Northern Ireland, Ireland type of arrangement. Palestinians like, you know, uh, we, we should have the right to nationalism. I mean, like, I, th I saw one of the comments is like, why didn't, why did Palestinians only call themselves Palestinians after 67? They didn't. They started calling themselves Palestinians in 1908 and in 1911 with the newspaper called Palestine. You can, you can, you can Google that up. And so there, there has been aspirations of a Palestinian, um, you know, uh, a, a nation and, 
I mean, I don't think that, I mean, we don't have the power to say, oh, you can't deny that from us. The focus now should just be outnumbering the radicals on both sides who sort of hog up all the space on social media and, and, and say, you know, insensitive or triggering things using triggering language. And then normal people would just react to that and then become polarized. You know, uh, I think people like us should be actively calling um, people like that out on our respective sides and to push for dialogue that um, that consolidates both narratives, you know, so we can create a new narrative uh, that could eventually lead to a greater future.